Welcome to another edition of From the Preacher's Study. My name is Kevin Clark, and I, along with my colleague and friend, Bob Hutto, who's the preacher here at the Oak Mountain Church of Christ, have the privilege of bringing to you uh, these teachings of Jesus uh, from the Beatitudes. Uh, we're very excited about the opportunity to talk about uh, these elements, all of which should be uh, possessed by those who are citizens of the kingdom, by Christians. Uh, we, we've made this point a couple times. You can't pick and choose and say, I, I want to be the poor in spirit. And, no, I want to be the merciful, and I want to be those that are persecuted. No, these are all encompassing, and they're really characteristics that all of us should have. And uh, we're encouraging everybody, and it's starting with ourselves, to look at these things very carefully, very closely, examine ourselves, and see if we're displaying uh, these attributes in our lives. Do we have these uh, attributes in our service to God? Uh, as always, we want to start by uh, thanking our two deacons, Jason Reed and uh, Mark Townsend, both of whom are always with us, and they make this possible. And we're so very thankful for them. We're thankful for their families and the sacrifices they make that allow them to be here and provide the, the services we need to put this program on. And we want to say thanks to you. There's so many of you folks who are very diligent in listening and uh, watching the podcast. And we've heard feedback. Some of that comes over social media. Some of that's in person. But it's just very encouraging to see how many people are benefiting from hearing God's Word expounded upon. That's our, our aim here. We're not here to sell politics or our personal views. Uh, we're really just trying to bring out the truth of God's Word. Uh, that builds faith, and that faith makes us pleasing to God. We need that in order to be pleasing. Hebrews eleven six says that. So uh, thank you for being attentive. And thank you for being faithful. If we can ask one thing of you, in addition to be faithful uh, uh, watchers of the program, spread the Word to others. Let others, let your friends, your family members, if you get something out of this, share it with other people. Likely, they'll also get something out of it as well. All right. Well, I just a couple of ideas here as we begin. No matter what the world is, no matter what's going on in the world around us, it might be total chaos, mm-hmm. you know, but if we can follow the teaching of Jesus, our lives are centered, right. uh, we have a purpose, uh, we kind of know where we're going, we'll know what we're trying to accomplish, and again... All, all around us, just a mess and in confusion. And but, but you know, we're we're firm. You know, we're you know, our feet are firmly established. Right. And uh, the world may cr- crash around, crash down around us, but but we're okay because we know exactly what we're trying to do, where we're going, and what we're trying to accomplish because we're following the teaching of Jesus. Amen. If if you were to ask any one of us. Uh, kind of where, where does being a disciple of Jesus begin? Mm-hmm. We might say, well, you don't do this, and you don't <laughs> right. do that, and you don't do that, yeah. or you know, you do this and this and this. That's not where Jesus begins, no, is it? No, not at Jesus all. begins with the attitude, right. with the heart. Be poor in spirit, mourn, be meek, be merciful. And, and that's that says something to me. Amen. We get caught up in the don't do this, don't right. do this, do this, this, and this. And I'm not saying those are unimportant. Sure, they are important. Right, right. But it begins with the heart. It begins with the attitude. Amen. And so we can do all those things, but if our attitude isn't what it should be, well, then we've fallen short. And so Amen. just want to always keep that in mind. Keep that attitude. Keep that heart uh, developing as, as Christ would have us to do. And, of course, as we develop those uh, characteristics and have that heart, we will do the things that are That's required right. for the right reasons because we love God and we love our fellow man, which are the two summations of all the teaching uh, that's been given. So we are now on blessed, in verse 8, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. And certainly, if there's anything that is needed in this day and age, it is yeah, more absolutely. purity of heart. Because let's face it, we live in a very impure environment. There's impurity in the books that we read. There's impurity in television programs that we watch. There's impurity in the movies we go see. And the, the advertisements that appeal to us just left and right, just inundated with anything but purity. And yet in the midst of that cesspool, God says, the people that are mine are going to have purity of heart. And if they do have that purity of heart, he says, they shall see God. I couldn't help but think about Hebrews 12, 16 uh, in that regard, a very similar concept. Hebrews 12, 16 says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Notice in both uh, the verses, Hebrews 12, 16, if you don't have holiness, you're not going to see the Lord. You look at uh, Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure mm-hmm. in heart, for they shall see God. So he ties the condition of our heart to our ability to see God. And certainly if you're holy, part of holiness is going to be pure of heart. And so this is something that's very important 
And it's very difficult living in the world that we do. First John five nineteen says the whole world lies on the sway of the wicked one. So for one to be pure in heart means you have to be intentional in that. One has to guard or protect your heart. One has to uh, make uh, be careful what goes into your heart because you remember the teaching of Jesus in Matthew chapter 15. He said that really the seat of all sin is, is your heart. And that's where all these problems come from. You remember that uh, the, 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 the Pharisees were getting on Jesus' disciples because they were picking up grain and uh, not, well, I'm sorry, washing, uh, eating bread without washing their hands. And uh, Jesus challenges them, talking about they had transgressed the commandments of God. And then a little deeper in, he gets to the heart of the matter when he's off with his disciples, and they're talking about this exchange and the fact that the Pharisees had been offended by Jesus. And look at verse 15, that Peter answered and said to him, explain this parable to us. He just talked about every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted and uh, leave the Pharisees alone. They're blind leaders of the bond. Verse 16, so Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach is eliminated but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witness blasphemies these are the things which defile a man but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man so jesus is condemning the pharisees for really focusing on the superficial don't worry about the washing of hands what you need to worry about is what is the condition of a man's heart that results in all of these things. And so we're told the seat of murder, the seat of evil thoughts, blasphemy, where does that come from? It comes from our minds. And that what our speech and our conduct are really symptoms of a greater problem, which is our heart. So going back to what you were saying, sometimes we're managing the symptoms mm -hmm. and we're not getting to the root of the problem. And Jesus says, no, 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 let's get to the root of the problem. This stuff comes from the heart. If you get this right, then we won't have to worry about the symptoms. The symptoms will go away. Right. Similar passage in Matthew chapter 15. The mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Mm -hmm. The good man brings out of his good treasure what is good. The evil man brings out of his ev evil treasure mm -hmm. what, is, what is evil. And so what, what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. You that's know, right. That's, so if you purify your heart, well, then your speech is going to be pure. Your, Absolutely. Your deeds will be pure. I thought about Genesis <laughs> chapter 8. You might remember that. Uh, this is, mm -hmm. has to do with uh, Noah coming out of the ark mm -hmm. uh, after the flood. The, it says, The Lord smelled the soothing aroma. Noah had built an altar and offered a sacrifice to God, and God's responding to that. The Lord said to himself, I will never again curse the ground on account of man. The intent of man's heart is evil from his youth. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. he talked about you know the world being an evil, and it's right. a corrupt place. That's sort of the natural tendency yep. of human beings. And right. so we have to resist that. Absolutely. And we have to be intentional and deliberate on developing, cultivating a pure heart, getting the impurities out right. and, and uh, uh, developing, filling it with pure things. Yeah, I couldn't help but think about along those lines, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, right. where Paul gives this admonition. Finally, brethren, whatever things are pure, or I'm sorry, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you've learned, received, and heard, and see in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So first of all, we're told that we can control our thoughts. Sometimes people will tell us, well, mm -hmm. no, thoughts just naturally have a life of their own. I, I don't have any control. No, he mm -hmm. says, look, these are the kinds of things that you need to intentionally discipline your mind to not only think about, but meditate, really spending some time thinking these things through. What are these things? Things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, there's our word, things that are lovely. So Paul is saying we need to spend more time intentionally thinking about these good things. Why? Because that affects the condition of our heart. The more we think about good things, it's kind of like what's that old adage, you are what you eat from a physical standpoint. If you eat a bunch of junk food, then guess what? You're going to have a bad physique. You're going to have a lot of health problems. On the other hand, if you're careful about what you eat, you're going to be healthy and you're going to live longer and, and have a better quality of life. Well, might I suggest this? We are the media that we consume. So if you're sitting around watching things that are pornographic or listening to things that are laced with profanity or, you know, just pumping your head full of all kind of ungodliness, 
Is it any wonder that you're going to struggle to have the pureness of yeah. mind, the pureness of heart that Jesus is saying is characteristic of his kingdom? Uh, we can't do that. I mean, what we think about, what we read, what we listen to is going to impact our heart. So as you said, it's twofold. We've got to keep out the negative, but as Philippians 4 says, add the positive. Think, spend more time in prayer. Spend more time studying God's Word. Spend more time thinking about God's Word. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, taking that Word and apply it to yourselves and say, okay, how does this fit? The more that we think about spiritual things and we're spiritually minded, the more we're going to have that pureness of heart that God says is required to be a member of His kingdom. So you can think about it like this. You've got a container and it's full of water, but it's filthy. It's, it's dirty, it's impure, it's polluted. And maybe you have... a you know, a pipe leading some mm -hmm. impure water into that container. And over here, you've got another pipe, and it's got clean water in it. So you've got that container. It's full of impurities and all of that. Well, to get that water pure, you got to shut off the valve yeah, that's right. that allows the impure water coming right. in. But the more then the more pure water you have feeding into that right. container, eventually that impurity is going to... Uh, be eliminated that's and you'll have right. a pure so that's what we want to do with our heart right. we might have some impurity and right. we got to shut off yeah the you know the the incoming impurity got to right. shut that off and fill it with philippians chapter 4 verse uh verse 8 that that's you just right. read fill it with those things right. and eventually you have a pure heart amen and i thought about first peter chapter 1 mm -hmm. verse 22 since you have in <clears throat> obedience to the truth purified your souls mm -hmm. for a sincere love of the brethren fervently love one another from the heart yeah so that you you purified your soul so you talked about that idea right. well i can't control my thoughts you mm -hmm. know they whatever pops into my head pops into my head mm -hmm. no That's this right. says you have purified right. your souls and so we have responsibility to to take responsibility That's for right. what is in our heart what resides there. Amen. And it's very important. I love 1 Timothy 1, uh, verse 5. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. So the purpose of the commandment, love from a pure heart. And so we need to keep our heart pure. Guard your heart, for from it spring the issues of life, uh, Proverbs 4.23 um, we have to be very intentional about this, and we have to work at it. And like you said, uh, we are in the world, and uh, the Bible makes very clear we're not supposed to go off and have our own lot of you know, pure communities of Christians and nothing mm -hmm. but that. We have to be in the world because we're a light of the world. Jesus talked about being with those who are sick. But there's a way to be in the world and not be of the world. We That's saw right. that with Jesus. Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners, but he did not participate in their sins. In fact, what he used that for is an opportunity to teach them, not only in the things he said, but the way he conducted himself. And so we can live in this ungodly world and be light. In fact, Matthew 5, 13 through 16 suggests that's exactly what we are. Uh, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how should it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor they light a lamp and put it on a basket, but on a lampstand it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And part of that light shining is to have a pure heart, which will manifest itself in pure speech which will manifest mm -hmm. itself in pure dress, it will manifest itself in pure activities. Uh, all of these things come from getting that heart right. And so we want to challenge everybody, look at your heart, where you're at. And, and sometimes Christians get in this thinking that, I call it Teflon Christianity. You can see anything, you can watch anything, you can hear anything, and it's not going to have any impact on you whatsoever because you're firmly grounded in Jesus Christ. Well, that that is a, a, just a foolish approach to things because we know, as the Bible is telling us over and over again, that this is very important. Mm -hmm. And this is fragile and it's vulnerable and it can be polluted with all these messages that are out there. So as you said, let, let's shut off the bad water and let's increase the spigot of good water so that we can have that pure heart. So, I mean, we, we can be very intentional, very specific in identifying problem areas yes. um, uh, that, it, that are responsible for the impurity in our heart. And so uh, greed, yes. you know, greed is a, a quality that yeah. makes our heart impure. And so if we're continually thinking about how to possess more and more material things, yes. we're not getting the greed out of our heart. 
Uh, lust is a problem. Yes, very much uh, so. And if we're continually watching internet porn and right. stuff like that, okay, we're not getting the lust out of our heart. Right. Uh, envy would be another yep. specific area that we might have a problem with that makes our our hearts impure. Mm-hmm. But if we're constantly dwelling on what others have that I don't, right? Okay, we're we're not getting that out of our heart, and so we just got to identify those areas personally. What right. is my problem? Right. And identify that. Okay. What can I do to eliminate that, to diminish that? And we hope that as we every now and then stop, look back, am I making progress? We can see where, okay, I'm doing better. I don't know that many people, there might be some at some point, who overnight just completely shut it off. Right, right. But we should be able to make improvements and look back and say, look, I'm getting better. I'm better than I was. I'm going to keep on this this track and uh, continue to develop this purity of heart. You know, sometimes I've heard Christians do this and in their own pursuit of personal holiness and personal purity, they will cut out some things that are not necessarily wrong in themselves, but for them, they cause a stumbling block or historically there have been some problems associated with that. So uh, be mindful that there may be some liberties that you give up again, just because you're trying to be pure. They may not be things that are wrong in of themselves, but maybe because of your own past problems or past sins, or maybe you've had some addictive uh, issues that you just need to stay away from certain environments altogether. Um, go ahead. I heard, a, I heard a, a guy say one time that a particular style of music just sort of aroused in him some inappropriate feelings and yeah. thoughts and stuff yeah. like that. He said, I just had to t- turn it off and yeah. get, get rid of that. That's right. But if there wasn't anything necessarily wrong with the music right. itself. Right. But the music, you know, turned these feelings on for him. That's exactly. And so I just I, yeah. I just had to I just had to get rid of that. Amen. I, notice Matthew five, what Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Right, right. We're not gonna see God exactly. without purifying our heart. And That's so right. You know, if that doesn't wake us up, I don't know what will. That's a great point. And really, we need to keep that ever in front of us. And we want to see God. We want to be with God. We want to be with God for all eternity. And if there's anything that stands in the way of that, we've got to get that out of our lives. And impurity is one of those things that will keep us from seeing the God that we want to spend all eternity with. So we've run out of time. We appreciate you being attentive to this. We want to challenge you, as we always do, to take these words, study them yourself. Uh, We hope that the only time you hear about the Sermon on the Mount is not the 20 minutes or so that we spend together. Together. spend some time in private study really committing these things to memory and thinking about how they apply to your lives there's so many applications we kind of hit the surface and what we can do in this limited context uh, we certainly want to end every podcast with prayer as we do and I want to turn that over to our brother Bob Hutto to do so okay let's pray together our father in heaven we're so thankful for all the good things that you've done for us We acknowledge you and praise you for your goodness and your generosity, specifically, Father, for the mercy that you've shown to us and uh, the patience that you showed to us, the long-suffering that you have toward us. We want to respond, Father, to your goodness and your loving kindness and your mercy by purifying ourselves as you are pure, to eliminate everything that's impure, that's unholy from our hearts so that we will be, as much as we can, Uh, just duplicates of your holy and pure character. Help us, Father, to think seriously about ourselves, to see those areas in our lives, in our heart, that are not pure, not as they should be. And give us the resolve, Father. Help us to, to develop the determination to eliminate those things from our, our lives. Uh, Father, help us to develop pure hearts and in turn to develop pure speech pure motives, pure desires, pure goals, pure works, so that we can be the kind of people that you would have us to be. Our desire, Father, what we long for is to be with your presence in glory, to to look upon your faith, to look upon your face and to see you. We understand, Father, that no impurity is going to be allowed in your presence uh, in th- when, when this life is over. So help us, Father, to eliminate anything that would be impure, that would hinder our opportunity to be with you in your presence throughout eternity. We're thankful that Jesus has come, that he has shown us the way. Help us to follow in his footsteps each day. Be patient with us. Have mercy upon us. 
Forgive us when we do wrong. Uh, Help us to see those things and acknowledge them. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.